Well, I'm about to go and do something that I haven't done for 34 years. Stick around and see what it is. Hi guys, Neil from Runny Duck Effect. How are you going? Today, I'm uh, gonna to talk about a, oh, a bit, a bit dark through there. So today I wanna to cover a couple of things. Firstly, my, my shoe dilemma that I'm facing at the moment. I'm having a few issues with selecting my next training shoe or shoes. A little bit more of the math running that I'm using at the moment as I work towards Tarawera Ultra Trail, which is now only three and a half weeks away. And there's also this. Well, I'm about to go and do something that I haven't done for 34 years. Stick around and see what it is. That was about four weeks ago, and what I was on my way to do was a coaching course. After doing some uh, online theory assignments, uh, what dropped into my inbox today was this. Not sure if you can see that there. It was a certificate to say that I had uh, successfully completed my theory and uh, practical component, and that I was now a, uh, a level one coach. So the reason it was a back to the future moment for me was that back in 1985, I had completed a level one coaching course. Uh, back then I was heavily involved in athletics. I was doing my own running. I was the secretary of the local athletics club. I was organizing events, uh, courses to um, gain my accreditation in rules officials for various events. And the coaching component was just another bow to what I was doing in, in, with athletics at the time. Like I was 19 um, and I was doing a lot of running and basically everything was just geared towards athletics. So after I received the coaching certificate, I put together a little group as young middle distance runners. We had a little bit of success, which was great. And look, I really enjoyed the coaching side of things back then. And it was just unfortunate, I think life got in the way and then that during my 20s, you know, I went off and did other sports and just sort of fell out of love with athletics. But after getting back into running in my early 40s and now approaching my mid 50s, I thought it was time that I went back and did the coaching course again. I just feel like I would like to give something back to uh, a sport which has given me so much. So not sure what I'm going to do with uh, this accreditation. You know, stay tuned, see where it leads, but I'm sure somewhere down the track I'd like to be doing some sort of coaching. So really happy to have done it. Anyway, back to this week's topic, shoe delivery. They, so shoes, you know, I think we're all searching for that perfect shoe where we get just the perfect fit. We get the, uh, the great ride, they're comfortable. And every time you put them on, they just feel great. It just makes you want to get out and really pound the pavement. Now I've been using um, some hokers or hockers. I don't know, do we say hoker? Do we say hocker? I'm going to go with hoker. And I've been using three pairs of hokers, which I'm using in rotation at the moment, along with the New Balance 1500s, which I've had for a few years. I ran a marathon in them uh, a couple of years ago, but uh, pretty much retired them after that marathon because just found that they destroyed my feet. But I've been using these, uh, these shoes for my grass recovery sessions. Um, seem to be fine on the grass. But all the shoes are starting to get to the end of their tether. So I'm on the lookout for new shoes. And there is just so many shoes. When I first got back into running, it just seemed like each brand had a one model and that was it. But now each brand has so many different models, they have so many different, you know, heel drops and uppers and little cushioning that goes into each shoes. And then it can get really confusing. And even though I've been running for, for quite a number of years, I'm finding it confusing now which shoe to go with. Even though I've been looking for a while, and I'm no closer. I'm no closer to finding what shoe I want. You know, on YouTube now, there's just so many channels uh, doing running shoe reviews. You know, I've been looking at a number of these reviews and different shoes, different brands, different models. I'm confused. I still don't know what I'm gonna get. Uh, once I get the Ultra Trail at Tarawera out of the way, I'm gonna delve straight into preparing for my next marathon. And I just don't know which shoe to use um, to run in or which shoes. You know, I wanna get more than one pair of shoes. Uh, I wanna be able to rotate the shoes and I just don't know which way to go. Do you find selecting your next shoe confusing? If you do, let me know in the comments below how you got around it. You know, strike up a conversation down in the comments and 
I just don't know which way to go next. This is what I've been using over the last sort of 12 months, so have a look. I've been running the hockers now for about 12 months. Resisted a long time in getting a pair because uh, running friends who had them, I joked with them that they looked like clown shoes. And I guess if you have a real close look at them, they do look a bit like clown shoes. Anyway, about 12 months ago, Hoka re-released -re the Clifton ones and they were super cheap at the time. So I jumped in and I bought a pair just because I really wanted to try them out. My knees are a little bit dodgy from uh, playing football when I was younger, so I just thought that the extra cushioning in the, in the hockers might have uh, might have helped. Uh, I put them on the first time I had a run in them. They were great, loved them. Uh, I loved them so much that uh, I went and bought another pair of Clifton ones, and I thought at the same time I'd get some Clifton fours. However, the Clifton fours I just haven't been able to warm to. I find them a lot firmer than the Clifton ones. First pair of Clifton ones I've got. I've got nearly a thousand kilometres on them and I'm still running in them and they still feel okay. The second Clifton ones I've got are uh, up to about 700k now and they're still uh, they're still really good. But the Clifton 4s, uh, I've got 500k on them and they're still firm, they just, they're just not getting softer. So that's where the dilemma's coming from. Um, I don't know whether I should stick with the, with the, the Hockers, uh, with the latest version of the Cliftons or whether I should try a different model or whether I should try something completely different. When I got back into running, I was pretty much uh, exclusively running in uh, ASICS footwear. Uh, whatever model of Kayano was out at the time, I was pretty much running in. Uh, I don't know why I swapped from ASICS uh, way back then. Um, I think I just wanted to try something different. I think I moved into Mizunu's and then went to like Nike, Adidas, uh, Sacconi, Brooks and now I'm running in the hocker. And, and to be honest, I haven't been really interested in getting back into ASICs and, until just recently with their release of their Glide Ride. And it's just sort of tweaked my interest and um, there's been some favorable reviews of the shoe on YouTube. And ASICs did a really good job with their campaign of race with no finish uh, for, the, for the shoe. You can see that on YouTube as well. It just looks like a really nice shoe. It looks like it's um, pretty comfortable for a for an everyday trainer but at 230 odd Australian dollars for the shoe it's quite expensive I guess you could say I'm a bit of a top <laughs> when it comes to to buying anything in the past I've pretty much just bought shoes which are sort of the old models and for 230 dollars I can probably nearly get two pairs of shoes for for that price so, yeah I'm not really sure as much as I'd really like to get a pair of the glide rides I think they just might have to wait for a little bit longer so you can see from all that that you know I've run in a lot of different shoes and I, I just don't know which way to go. I'm, I don't know whether I should get something with a decent heel drop. I don't know whether I should get something with a, the next to zero heel drop. I know in my running uh, pre-injury days I was very much a heel striker. Um, nowadays that I've just tried to just modify my style a little bit. I'm trying to get more onto the forefoot uh, or the midfoot. Does that mean now I need to look at a different shoe? I really like the Hokers, uh, but the Clifton 4s have, have turned me off a little bit. I don't know whether I should stick with the Hokers and maybe try a different model. Um, I like the Glide Rides from ASICS. I think they look like they're uh, a nice trainer. Could suit me for the marathon preparation. Uh, or do I go back to Brooks? Or do I go to Sacconi again? Uh, or do I to go back to Adidas? I was in Adidas for, for quite a long while and I really liked the shoes that they were putting out. And then all of a sudden they came out with this boost cushioning foam in the, in the shoes and the ultra boost. And I just found that I was having like Achilles and calf issues with them. Uh, I don't know if it was because I was heel striking, but it turned me right off the Adidas and I haven't run in them for a number of years now. Now, these seem to have uh, changed the way they do shoes as well, so do I go back to them? I don't know. So I ran in the Mizunus for quite a while as well, the Wave Riders, uh, really loved those shoes, and they changed. You know, like a lot of shoe companies do, they, uh, they fiddle around with what they've got. Uh, I can't remember what, what model the Wave Rider was, was that I was running in, but it was a great shoe. I went and bought their new model the next year, it had changed, it had got really stiff and I just didn't like it at all. 
and I gave Mizuno away. That's when I really started looking at other shoe brands. It's confusing out there, and that seems to be the word of the day, doesn't it? Confusing. So it's gonna be a bit of a journey. More research to find the shoe. As you can see, I'm just confused. I don't know which way to go. Look, any help that you can give me, hit me up in the comments below. So what am I gonna do? I've got about four weeks until I start a, a block of training for my next marathon. So I need to find some shoes by then. Have I got an inkling which way I'd like to go? Oh, look, if I could afford the uh, Asics Glide Ride, they'd be the shoe that I'd go for, but probably not. It may be, ooh, I don't know. Maybe another pair of Nike. Might look at the Pegasus again. Uh, I might even look at some New Balance. So follow the vlog. Um, see what I come up with with, with the shoe. Uh, you know, hit the subscribe button down below, um, smash that notification bell so you know when the next uh, video drops. As I said, the word of the day is confusing and I'm confused. The shoe dilemma is real and I just, I don't know. So, what's this space? So let's talk a little bit about math training that I've uh, gone through this week. Just a moment, I'll get some notes so I can remember what I did for the week. Alrighty, so how's the week been uh, running with math? Um, pretty good. Math's been going well. Uh, most of the days I've, uh, I've stuck within my heart rate uh, aerobic range of 127 to 135 beats per minute. About 100 kilometers of, of running, uh, roads, trails, a little bit of vertical in there, probably not as much as I would like heading towards Tarawera. Uh, heart rate on the hills is, as to be expected, spiked. Now next week I'm actually going to cover um, how I've adapted using the MAF uh, when running hills and trails. So I'll delve into that a little bit more in next week's vlog. So MAF is, is going well, and I'm feeling that I'm getting, I'm getting fitter. I'm finding the runs um, pretty comfortable. And that's another thing too, even though after um, Sunday where it was hot, was steamy and I... It is really sticky and humid this morning. And I lost, what was it, two and a half kilos during that run. On the Monday, I still backed up and felt, you know, I felt pretty good. The legs felt good, the body, um, even though I, I felt okay myself, it must have been a little bit tired because the heart rate was probably a little bit higher than what I expected on that grass recovery session. So, so it's all going well, I'm sticking to it. I've got three and a half weeks um, until Tarawera. Uh, it's Thursday and I've just finished what should have been a easy eight kilometer run uh, rolling over a few little hills but it was anything but uh, according to my watch uh, the heart rate it was saying that my heart rate was well above the math range weighed myself after that run, just a tick under 68 kilos, uh, that means I lost about two and a half kilos on that run today, which I can believe because I sweated a bucket loads early in the first three hours. So that's about it for this week. Next week, just remember, look at how I've adapted the math method to running on trails and hills. I'll catch you next week on Weekly with Woody. Until then, hooroo. Oh, and just finally, um, just want to thank everybody, the, to the new subscribers, to everyone who's taken time to uh, um, check out the video. I uh, really do appreciate it. And I'm really enjoying reading your comments. Uh, I'm trying to answer everyone that leaves a comment. 
Yeah, look, if you enjoy the video, you know, make sure that you hit the subscribe button, uh, tap that notification bell so that you uh, know when the next video drops.